Hi everyone and welcome back to this channel. I'm Dr. Sam and today we are going to talk about a very important topic which is research. And you can do this research during your dental school or even before your dental school during your pre-med or pre-dental. You may be in a dental school in US, in India, in Pakistan, in South America or Dubai or any part of the world you would need to follow a basic outline of how to go about in order to do research. And that is exactly what I'm going to do in this video today. For this, I am going to use an example of a friend who did this during her BDS in India, and she actually ended up publishing her research. And this was also a major part of her past application to MS schools in the US. And having a, you know, a strong research background definitely puts a lot of weight onto your application. So it certainly helped her get into an MS endodontics program. And after completing the hectic MS endo program here, she's been practicing as an endodontist. So this is going to be an example of a person who wanted to do endo, but you can apply the same principles in your specific fields. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what are the details for this. Okay. So the first step that you need to do is read through your college website. Check if there are any research projects, currently you know, ongoing research projects which are happening in your school. Many of the MS students or the postgraduate students or the residents have to submit a thesis to graduate and you know, many a times they will be doing some form of research in order to support their thesis. So what you can do is check if you can be a part of their research group. Um, and for this, you would basically have to ask their faculty members as well as your faculty members and come up with a solution for yourself, okay? If that is not possible, what you can do is explore your own research interests. Talk to all of your faculty members about your research interests. You basically have to identify a specific faculty member with similar interests as you. So, for example, if you're interested in endo, talk to a endo faculty. If you're interested in prosthodontics, then talk to a prosthodontics faculty. And the other most important thing is if you have any faculty members already publish some articles, then make sure that you read them up and inform them about your interests, okay? The fact that you actually took the efforts to read their article and then let them know your interest in it will definitely increase your chances for them to accept you as a research student from probably a wide number of students who are asking them about it, who keep reading them about it. Okay. And once you and the faculty member have agreed to do maybe a summer project, then the next step is that you have to write a letter of intent. And this letter is basically to solidify that he or she, that is the faculty member, will be able and willing to take you as a summer research student. Now, once your letter of intent has been received, then the next step is that, you know, this can be different. This step can be different in different colleges. Sometimes just a letter of intent would be okay and once the faculty accepts it, you are good to go ahead with your research. But sometimes you would actually have to submit a paper application to the school saying, hey, I would like to do research with this faculty member and my research topic is so and so. Okay. Or you might need to apply, you know, as in the earlier cases where there was research going on in other departments already if you want to submit your application for summer research opportunities with them for ongoing research happening, right? So, and then the next step is you actually start working on your research, okay? Now, you can work on it during any of your four years of dentistry, or you can work during your internship or residency or even after, you know, in some schools, you can still visit them even after your, your, you have completed your internship. So, for example, my friend's research involved detecting the prevalence of deep dentinal caries and fluoride levels in five different suburbs in Navi Mumbai in India. So they collected data from around 900 patients coming to five different dental colleges in that area for this. Okay, 
and what they basically did was they calculated the caries index or the OHIS for all of these patients for about three to four months and after that she and her research partner went to the government water testing center in order to get the fluoride water levels in those five areas okay and after this they were lucky to have been blessed with a friend who helped them get a data analysis done for all of their data and this analysis was done by a person who actually worked for the newspaper which is times of india so this was definitely a trusted and a legitimate help and it definitely added to the research paper so now you may say well i do not know anyone who can do this data analysis for me or i'm not well versed with it so what do i do i do not have a person who can help me with this well i have an answer for you as well what you can do is you can go to your community dentistry department in your school okay the professors out there have graduated with their thesis involving data analysis for these situations. So I'm sure they would definitely help you with the analysis for this. Okay. So as you can see, research is not easy. It does require a lot of groundwork. Okay. And once you've finished all of this groundwork, then your next step is basically writing the research paper and publishing it. Now, usually the research paper has a certain format, okay? You and me, out of the blue, might not know about this research format, right? In case of my friend, she did not have an ongoing research happening in their college. So she attended a research protocol course organized by the Nair Dental Hospital in India to basically get an idea about how to write a research paper and exactly what is the level of evidence that is required in their research. So it was about a two and a half day program and I'm sure you can find such similar programs in different universities throughout the world. Um, just look up, search online, Google it, okay? So she also attended the American Academy of Endodontics conferences before she applied for dental schools. Yeah, because she wanted to get an idea of how these papers are expected to be presented, okay? Now, make sure that you choose a topic which is closely related to the course that you want to take. If it's an MS course in orthodontics, Make sure you work on a topic which is closely related to orthodontics. If you are planning to apply for an MS course, then make sure that you uh, use a topic which is closely related to the MS course that you want to apply to. If you are doing research before getting into dental school during your pre-dental or pre-med, okay, then make sure that that research topic is closely related to those schools. okay? Because this basically suggests that you have a strong desire to get into the field. The last point is that once you have actually written your paper completely, then you would have to submit your paper um, to various journals in order to get them published. Now, once you have a research paper published, then it makes you a very strong applicant in the whole sea of applications. So make sure you follow all of these steps and good luck with your research journey. So if you have any questions, please make sure to write down in the comment section so we can share them with all our community members. Then you can even email me directly. All my information is in the description below. If you're new, consider subscribing to this channel so that we can help all our dentist friends around. Adios for now.